Oh, look at these guys. Look at these. Let's go to this Mario Kart race. me adam I, I probably don't have to tell you that like you guys know if that the guy talking to you is probably the host of the of the poker vlog so yeah i'm adam if you're new welcome if you're not new welcome back i think i got that right this time we're at aria this is like our third or fourth uh time playing but let me, you just watch this hand in the background but then listen to my story too so this i'm i'm in vegas and i'm uh, recording this audio and, and editing this vlog but this is a separate trip like i'm on another trip right here and and I'm not playing on this trip because uh, we're just here to eat and shop, and, and we're going to Texas next week for that live stream at the Lodge. So I'm up here in the room right or, uh, where last night we're at the Aria Casino again watching uh, Aaron and Dan. You'll meet Dan later in this vlog watching them play poker. Uh, just real quick sidetrack. You see here I have a pair of sevens. There's a diamond uh, flush draw out there. Uh, we see that guy do a diamond check. That's what that arrow signified. And then uh, I go ahead and I throw out a bet of $120. And uh, we're going to see what he does here uh, based on that. But he just makes the call, which makes me think that he probably has uh, one of two hands, a pair or a diamond. And uh, when he checks this, that makes me feel like, aha, aha, he doesn't have a diamond. If he has a pair, it could be like a pair of tens. It could be, you know, pocket eights, pocket nines, something like that. So those hands beat me. So I go ahead and throw out a bet of $400. This is a bluff. This is not a value bet. This is a bluff. I'm trying to get him to fold. And he does fold, and that's really awesome. And, and then I win the pot. So back to my story. I'm at Aria last night, remember? I'm, I'm not filming. I'm not even playing. Dan's playing. Aaron's playing. There's a girl with bunny ears. So I go over to the girl. Well, technically, I go over to Dan or Aaron, but the girl's next to him. And she says, hello, I'm a hare. And I, you know, H-A-R-E. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she said, uh, I'm a hare. And I was like, oh, you're a hare. Like, because you're bunny ears. You're a hare. You're not a rabbit. You're a hare. Yeah, because you're bunny ears and I said you're not a hare or you're not a rabbit you're a hare and I said those words and then she said will you follow me for a second well I follow you for a second I guess I'm getting a look from Dan and Aaron like what does she want so I gotta find out so I follow the girl she takes me up to the to the poker supervisor and complains to the man that I have misidentified her and he looks at me and is like well what did he say she said well he called me a bunny and then he looks at me he looks at her he looks at me he's like what are you talking about and she said, I'm a hare. This is a 100% true story. You couldn't make, I couldn't make this up if I wanted to. And here I went with a pair of fours, by the way. Uh, and, and so he, he assures her, hey, I'll take care of this. Why don't you go back to your seat? Uh, here I have a king six uh, on the button. going to make it $30 because it was folded to me. And that's what I like to do when uh, it's folded to me. There's a straddle out there, but king six rates to be better than that. So she goes back to her seat. I guess uh, small blind three bets here. She goes back to her seat. And, and he says, dude, I, I would I would stay away from that broad. Dude, that is not advice that I need. I know right then and there I need to stay away from this girl. Uh, he, I got the king six, and it doesn't play very well against a three bet, so I just four bet it to try to take it down right now, make it 3.30 to go on the button, make that guy feel like a horse's patoot. And, uh, you know, this is also a bluff, by the way, guys. This is a bluff. And uh, he makes the fold, and that's good news for me so that I can scoop another pot and, uh, you know, and, and take that one in. So yeah, that girl was just a total wackadoo. Uh, here I switched seats to one of my favorite seats. I like the, the two, the three, the seven, or the eight. Although this is eight-handed, so I wouldn't like the eight-seat here because it's kind of where the nine is. I like to be where I don't have to look at anybody. I, I just look straight ahead. And I promise myself I'm never going to fold king six again because of how masterfully I played it the last time. So here I call in the big blind because that's what I do. Uh, I made a rule not to fold king six suited anymore, especially of the club variety. And I flop a pair. Not the best pair to flop because I mean, it's a middle pair and there's... You know, high cards and people who raise preflop have high cards a lot, but uh, can't fold for one little teeny tiny bet. So I make the call. There we go to a go to a turn card, hoping for a safe one like a king or a six. Oh, that's good. That's a king. Yeah, I got three kings. I keep three kings. Uh, rates to be the best hand. So it goes check check. That's what that big graphic means. And then the seven of diamonds hits the river. And this is when I find out that he actually doesn't even have anything because I just fire out a little teeny tiny bet, just trying to get called by anything. You know, if you got an ace, you can't fold. I don't think for thirty five the way it went. You know, bet check bet. But anyway, he folds. 
And uh, King Six, I'm undefeated with King Six. That's just a, that's a good hand. I wouldn't recommend ever folding the King Six if you uh, if you are dealt it, specifically of clubs. Because everybody knows that there's more paint on a club card than like a heart or diamond, so you're more likely those cards are more likely to uh, to be shuffled to the top. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense. You would think the less paint they go to the top. That's not the way cards work, and everybody knows that. So the cards, you know, the, the, the more paint, you know, it's just the way the cards work. It'll actually go to the top of the deck. You're more likely to flush in clubs. You heard that here first. Here I have the 10-7, the big blind, just going to complete like 10 more dollars to win 100 million. So I just I just make the call. Is that a great call? I don't know. Is it a great hand? It's definitely not, but that's what I did. Comes 8-8-3. I have 10-7, so I nailed that flop, flopping a pair of hearts, but I did. Everybody checks. That's what the graphic means. It means everybody checks. We go to the turn card. I'm looking for a good turn card. Now, it's not a bad one. If you're going to hit a turn card that's not a pair, that's not a bad one. I have open and straight dark and win a lot of ways. So I fire out a bet. 30 bucks. Just trying to take it down. See what happens here. Um... I got a lot of points to get through, so this could look a little strong. Could look like I slow play an eight, maybe. Uh, the middle position player makes the call, and uh, so we're going to go to the river at least heads up, maybe three ways. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it's going to go three ways to the to the river card here, so 165 in. I don't really have anything. Just have 10 high. And the river card's a king, so that shouldn't help anybody who had a heart draw. Nobody should have an eight. You would think I'd get raised on the turn there with uh, somebody having an eight. So fire out a bet there of $120. Just trying to. This is a bluff again. I, I, this is getting. I'm bluffing a lot in this game because you know one, I don't get anything, and two, they're letting me. You know, if, if people are letting you bluff, I, I say bluff till you can't till you can't do it anymore. You know, just find something that works and then beat it. That's my advice. Just beat it. So that's what I did. I, 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 I bluffed. That's like the third bluff of this vlog. There's only been four hands so far, and uh, things are things are looking. They're looking okay. They're not looking bad. Like, this is looking okay. Here I have a queen of hearts and a nine of diamonds. Not a lot of premium hands in this vlog. I think you can see why, because I don't get them. Uh, so I raised a $15 in position with the queen nine. I don't think that's, I don't think there's any problem with that. Uh, I'm sure you guys do. You can let me know in the comments below. The button calls the 15, so we're going to go, uh, I said in position. We're not in position, not even a little bit. And it comes ace-jack-10, but that's a good flop for a person who had raised pre-flop. That You know, I don't like to talk boring stuff, but range advantage, I have it. So I go ahead and I, I bet the uh, the $20 and a 10 of diamonds on the turn card. I believe that would probably help him more than me, uh, unless I had like specifically ace-10. So I go for the check, and I have a plan. I have a P-A-L-N plan. So he makes it $55.00. And I'm going to go for the check raise, because that's exactly what I would do if I had a super duper strong holding. And so I make it 175, hoping that he thinks that I have a super duper strong holding. And guess what? He falls for it. He does make the fold. Okay, here we go. This is the current situation. Dan and Aaron. Dan and Aaron. One of them wants to pay the bill. They're gonna do a lot of things. How many liters are an elephant's bladder hole? Yeah. How many liters is an elephant's bladder hole? They're gonna bid now on what they think the waiter will say. So we'll start with Dan. We'll start with. <laughs> I'll start with uh, 10, 10 liters. 10 liters. Moving over to Aaron. 30. 30. 40. I'm gonna go 100. Under. All right, he's taking okay. the under on 100. So you have under 100 liters. Okay. And you have over 100 liters. Okay, ask you a question. We just want you to think of an answer and give us your best guess. That's it. Okay. All right. The question is, in liters, how much can an elephant's bladder hold? 20 liters? We don't know. We don't know. Thank you. It's like Eric paid for the whole bill. I came prepared to pay anyway. You know my favorite part of $1,400 dinners? Not paying for them. So after dinner, we go back to Aria. I get stuck in the middle table, or middle seat of the table, which I don't like. I got to look to the left. I got to look to the right. I'm a lazy person. I don't want to do any of that. Under the gun, 15 to cut off. Min, 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 min raises a 30. The button calls. And here's my, here's where I got this idea. This is the idea that I got. Now that I see the three people have 30 and one guy's got 15, 110 dead money out there. If I just throw out a huge bet, like say 150, they will all just fold, and then I will just win the money. That's that's my plan. So I just I do it. I just I do it. I just throw it out there. My plan is to just win. I don't have a very good hand, and and the problem with that is that the cutoff calls me. Like, didn't even think about it, really. He took him a while to put the chips in because, you know, he doesn't know what he's doing. He's, he's a novice. He's a first-time player, maybe. 
but he puts the money in. So uh, he, he, you know, he evidently is is a uh, more in tune to what's going on than I had given him credit for. So we go to a flop, uh, and I'm gonna need it to be scary, and it's not. It's five three eight. That's not scary. And I think the best play here would not be to go all in because he's gonna have like eights and nines and tens and jacks a whole bunch. And this is not a very good board for me. So I go, but I do go all in as played. I just don't think it's a very good shove. I go all in. He calls, and you see he's got pocket nines. He's 20, 75% to win. And uh, the ace on the turn, which I could have used on the flop, uh, doesn't help me. And I go down in, in a, I go down in, uh, in a ring of fire. I just go down in flames. And, and, and you know that I deserve to lose that pot. No one, no one played that hand worse than I did. So I like my plan pre-flop. Didn't like my execution on the flop. Should have just given up. But. Uh, I'm not much of a giver-upper. I don't know if you guys know that about me. I'm not much of a giver-upper. In high school, they called me the guy that never gives up. So here I have an ace and a ten. It's a it's a hand that can make a lot of straights. It can make the Broadway straight, which is the best possible straight you can have. Well, other than a steel wheel or other straight flushes. So I make it thirty-five dollars to go over a ten-dollar straddle, and the small blind makes the call, which is okay because I'm going to have position. Uh, since you can see next to my name, I have that little green button. That means I'm on the button. It's a good place to be in poker. Flop comes ace, queen, six. That's good. I have top pair against two people in position. Life is good. These are all good things. Uh, small blind checks. That's good. You know, she's not showing any strength. I like all. I like the way this hand is trending. Uh, none of the gun play, player donks into me, which is odd. You don't expect to see that. So he bets 60. I call the 60. When people donk into you, it kind of throws you off. You got to be like, well, why would he do that? You know, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't think if you had like a really super strong hand. But can't really raise my kicker's a 10, so make the call here. Uh, turn card's a 7 um, of diamonds, putting a backdoor diamond draw up there, which I guess we could worry about if the dude did raise or did bet preflop with the ace of diamonds. But um, he checks, kind of signifies to me that he's just giving up. I bet $125 and uh, don't care if he calls or folds. Uh, just either way is good with me. Uh, he ends up folding, we take it down, and we, uh, we book like a $600 win for the day. Sweet. There you go. If you, if you want to play a $1,000 buy and have at least $20,000, you heard it right here. Yeah, and then if you're moving from 2 five, five, ten, to make it your regular game, not shot taking, if you plan on playing for a long time, I would say $60,000. And Dan plays, Dan plays 5,100, man, how much money he has. <laughs> Falls and we all pray, hoping for the light of day. Down to the river, I have held the devil's hand, felt the weight of my own sin, burdened by the heart.